Hi. Am I on? I'm on. Hey. How y'all doing? Oops, I wandered already. Sorry. Um, sorry about that. Uh, there's a camera, and it's recording me, and I have to watch my mouth, and I can't wander to here because I wander out of the shot. Um, but I'm a wanderer on stage. My name is Tim Huckabee. I'm glad to be here. Really excited uh, to be here because I love this town, love this country. Um, and I've been one of the privileged Americans to be able to come to this country a few times in my past. Um, yeah, I mostly do keynotes, so it's certainly a pleasure these days, now that I'm old, certainly a pleasure to come here and do a technical session. I have lots of titles. That, that doesn't mean anything other than, you know, I have gray hair. I'm doing this a long time. Um, if you want to contact me, there's my stuff. I'll give you that again at the end of the presentations. Many people use my presentations to pitch their own companies. Some of this technology is cutting edge awesome. And I realize mostly we're all developers here, right? There's no, there's no evil networking people in here. No grossly overpaid, overpaid designers in here other than L. <laughs> Um, yeah, we're going to have some celebrities in the audience today. All right, so let's get moving. I think I only get an hour to do this. So, yeah, I've been doing this a long time. I, I worked on some uh, server teams at Microsoft um, a long, long time ago. Windows NT, if, if you guys remember that. Is anyone old enough to remember Windows NT? Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for validating my age. Uh, beautiful OS. Um, you know, I, that's where I learned how to build software at Microsoft. You don't know me or my companies, you know, because I... Frequently through my career, I've got to stand next to the big guy. And I'll be standing in ne next to the big guy again in a couple weeks, and you won't see me either. But Microsoft has this huge conference coming up in the US in a couple weeks. And I'm going to show you, without permission, the um, flagship keynote demo from the Microsoft Ignite conference, which they've told me not to do. But by the time they see this recording, it won't matter. All right, so I have a killer demo, and I, I really hope you like it because I have passion about computer vision, and, and that's what we're going to focus on today. You don't know my company's name, um, Internology, but uh, you certainly are using software we've built, whether using an Apple operating system or a Windows operating system or a Google operating system and even some other stuff. You're definitely using some of the software we've built. These, these are the companies that allowed us to talk about that we built software for them. But uh, suffice it to say, this custom application development company is building software for some of the coolest, biggest, largest, smallest companies in the world, um, including NASA and Nike and everyone in between. <sighs> More about Tim's stuff. These, uh, these are famous people using our software. Um, maybe they're not so famous here down under, but uh, there are some some famous people I can see up there from MTV and CNN. You would know us from CNN um, the, or, or NBC or ABC, some of the other news networks, not Fox. Um, we build the broadcast software for, specifically for CNN, that would be 250 million people watching your software being used at one time, uh, which we're very proud of. Right? Can you imagine being a young developer and building software for 250 million people at a time to use? Uh, that particular piece of software has an SLA. Are you familiar with SLA? Service level agreement. Uh, you hear the 99.9 .9 thing in the cloud. The cloud has to be up 99.9% .9 of the time. That's their SLA. This app has to be 100% of the time, 24-7. You cannot crash an application on broadcast TV live in front of 250 million people, um, which is interesting, right? Because it runs on Windows. That's supposed to be a joke. <laughs> I'm going to try and get some humor and some, um, some uh, entertainment in here. Here's what we're going to talk about today, uh, my, my current passion, and that's computer vision. And, and you may be thinking that in your everyday job, especially if you're a developer, you may be doing data applications you know, CRUD applications and things like that. But computer vision is going to touch you. It's a matter of time. What is computer vision? It's, you know, um, using cameras to see, having cameras interpret what they see. Um, and we have come a long way, a long way, especially in the last two years in computer vision. So I'm going to show you, if you ever seen me speak before, it's going to be demo, 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 and Visual Studio and stuff like that. Um, but we're also going to talk about where we're going in the future 
And then um, I have that killer demo at the end, and we'll squeeze that in. So, you know, today's talk is going through a lot of, of, of things. There's a lot of vision tools in the Microsoft Cognitive stack, and that's what we're talking about today, and a few that were just recently announced. The goal of this session is to take a majority or to talk about the majority of the computer vision tools and say, if I have problem X, what is the right tool in Microsoft Cognitive to solve it with Y? Make sense? Um, we won't have any significant time to go into any of the vision tools in depth. There's, there's, there's plenty of guidance available. This is one of those teams that provides an inordinate amount of guidance to get you up and running quickly. Um, so we won't drill into a lot short of object recognition, which I love. Um, so I'll go heavy into that. That's called custom in uh, vision. And that was the demo I'm talking about that I'm going to try on you guys for the first time. So for background, very quickly, this is the, the entire Microsoft Cognitive stack. Um, we're only talking about vision today. That's how, mu how fast and how much these people are doing. Uh, it's a collection of intelligence and knowledge APIs. It, it helps developers like you to, to build smarter applications. This team has been around for only about uh, two years, maybe three years. And it's made up of machine learning experts and PhDs in cognitive and other PhDs and Microsoft Research, which is their R&D group at Microsoft, and some Visual Studio folks. It's a unique team there. Um, this team is broadly called the um, AI group, the Artificial Intelligent Group at Microsoft. Um, this is a collection of intelligent APIs. This is what they produce, cloud-based for now, cloud-based intelligent APIs that allow computers to see, to hear, to speak, to understand, and to interpret um, needs and natural methods of communications. The, every one of these APIs is focus, focused on machine intelligence. Right? These are the experts of the world building this stuff. And the best thing about them is they're easy to use because they're just REST APIs. Okay, You're caught, you don't have to be, like Jennifer just walked in in the audience, she's an expert in machine intelligence. You do not have to be a PhD or a master's in machine learning to use this stuff. It's just calling a REST API and it's free to try. And in production, it's fractions of a penny to call these APIs. Um, you use these applications or use these APIs to make your apps more intelligent, engaging, and discoverable and, and things like that. <sighs> More PowerPoint. So um, just recently announced there's this concept at the bottom of called labs. That's the um, allows any developer to take part in a broader um, research community's quest to better understand uh, the future of cognitive computing. That would be for these PhDs and masters in this particular why, in th this particular world. Um, for the most part, they're all cloud services. They're all available on Azure. I already told you they're all REST APIs, which means also they're cross-platform. You know, I'm kind of a Windows jaded guy, right? Because I grew up on that side of the world, but there's no reason why you can't call these APIs from the other world, uh, from Java or, or Ruby or Python or whatever. They're just APIs. So that makes them cross-platform accessible. Oh, man. I forgot how many slides are here. Um, this team goes fast. Uh, they're on a two-year high pace innovation. There's now 29, if I, if I remember correctly, 29 intelligent APIs. They have a whole bunch of new ones. Uh, and we're going to talk about computer vision today. So why choose these APIs? You know, because there is competition. Competition is a great thing in technology. When I was a young, arrogant engineer at Microsoft, you know, we were all about competing against Netscape and, and, and uh, Linux and <laughs> Java and all that stuff. Now, it's a totally different world now. Um, the, 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 whole, the reason you use these APIs is um, they're easy because they're REST calls. Um, they're flexible. There's a breadth of intelligence in, in these knowledge APIs. And they're tested. They're tested at scale. They're tested at speed. Um, and they're used internally at Microsoft themselves. Uh, this is a great world. And it's a space race. And that's important. Um, because Google wants to do this, and Apple wants to do this, and even Facebook wants to do this type of stuff. But Microsoft still the, spends the most in R&D. And uh, 
no matter what anybody says, they would be one of the leaders in artificial intelligence, if not the leader uh, in this world. Okay, so there's, there's no better, you may have seen this before, but there's no better way for, for me to explain why you would do this than to look at this short two minute video. And I want you to watch very carefully because there's some skeletons in this closet. There's some weaknesses in this technology that I'll point out after we're done and show you how they're gonna be fixed. I'm Sakib Sheikh. I lost my sight when I was seven. And shortly after that, I went to a school for the blind. And that's where I was introduced to talking computers. And that really opened up a whole new world of opportunities. I joined Microsoft 10 years ago as a software engineer. I love making things which improve people's lives. And one of the things I've always dreamt of since I was at university was this idea of something that could tell you at any moment what's going on around you. I think it's a man jumping in the air doing a trick on a skateboard. I teamed up with like-minded engineers to make an app which lets you know who and what is around you. It's based on top of the Microsoft Intelligence APIs, which makes it so much easier to make this kind of thing. The app runs on smartphones, but also on the Pivot Head smart glasses. When you're talking to a bigger group, sometimes you can talk and talk and there's no response and you think, is everyone listening really well? Or are they half asleep? And you never know. I see two faces, 40 year old man with a beard looking surprised. 20-year-old woman looking happy. The app can describe the general age and gender of the people around me and what their emotions are, which is incredible. One of the things that's most useful about the app is the ability to read out text. Hello, good afternoon. Here's your menu. Great, thank you. I can use the app on my phone to take a picture of the menu and it's going to guide me on how to take that correct photo. Move camera to the bottom right and away from the document. And then it'll recognize the text. Read me the headings. I see appetizers, salads, paninis, pizzas, pastas. Hi. Years ago, this was science fiction. I never thought it would be something that you could actually do. But artificial intelligence is improving at an ever faster rate. And I'm really excited to see where we can take this. Hey. As engineers, we're always standing on the shoulders of giants building on top of what went before. And in this case, we've taken years of research from Microsoft Research to pull this off. I think it's a young girl throwing an orange frisbee in the park. For me, it's about taking that far off dream and building it one step at a time. I think this is just the beginning. That's why you do this stuff. At least that's the world I want to live in. I don't want to live in the world where Microsoft is spamming me an advertisement. Did you see that in the bottom left for a Surface Book? Kind of took away Ladies from the. Welcome, Doctor. It's kind of took away from the um, poignancy of that video. Um, we're going to talk about that video uh, as this session goes on because, the, like I said, there's some there's some uh, smoke and mirrors in there and some weaknesses that are that are being overcome, and uh, it's it's an exciting thing for me to see that. But. Um, uh, if you get a chance, um, his name is Saqib. He did a, a presentation on Build at Build, the last Build conference, Microsoft Build conference, and he showed the session was on how he codes in Visual Studio. It's freaking amazing. He's totally blind. Awesome session. So treat yourself. Go to the Build site and see that. All right. So let's move on to the tools for computer vision. There's lots of them. Um, to be very clear, this is not all the tools and technologies you can use for computer vision from Microsoft, or the world for that matter. Like in my other session later today, we're gonna to talk about HoloLens because that thing sees too. And we build applications for that device um, to see the world in a way different mixed reality type of way. Um, and, and the Windows team has tons of stuff on the, on the mixed reality side um, in computer vision. This scope, or the, the talk is scoped to focus solely on the computer vision tools for cognitive services. So I'm gonna walk through a number of tools. I think I've baked in plenty of time for you guys to be interactive if you'd like. 
questions or comments, so although you are coming off lunch, and so you might be a little comatose, so maybe I should pick up my jokes um, to a professional level at this point. Uh, here's the first set of tools. These are the oldest, some of the most exciting in the cognitive stack. Emotion, Bing, Image, Face, and Computer Vision. They're all REST APIs. They're all easy to implement. They're all free to try. Uh, at a minimum, each one of these APIs take an image as an input, and then they return some information about that image, some knowledge or information. Remember that a video is just a collection of images, right? Frames, 30 frames per second, partic particularly in, in HD. Um, that concept will be important later in some live demos I'm going to do. The first demo I'll do uh, uses the Face API, and I'll run this one right from Visual Studio. I casually mentioned that this team is very good about providing guidance. So almost everything they have is in um, source available to you and tons of guidance, all, all available to you. Uh, this, this particular source lives in, in, in GitHub. So let's move on. Thank God, we're at a demo. So let's uh, move on to the first demo. I believe I opened it. So let's see, how should we do this? How about I run it first and then I'll show you quickly how it's put together. Um, very quickly. I learned this from Jennifer. Yeah. How come it's not working? There we go. Yeah, I've been working on Windows for like, what, 25 years? And I saw Jennifer in her keynote shake the window and everything minimizes in the background. I had no idea you could do that. Did you guys know you could do that? You probably did because you're young. Screw you guys. All right. So. Um, let me do uh, one of the tricks, one of the real tricks, at least in my world, that we've been trying to solve for a decade is you're pulling frames out of a video and you're looking at a crowd of people and all you want is the faces. Right? You don't want to send a 10 meg picture up to a cloud API. You just want to send the face, right? Make sense? That, that's a tricky problem that these folks have solved. Um, I actually was playing around with this earlier, trying to find a good demo. I'm a fly fisherman. I don't know if you know what that is, but you have it here, and it's awesome. And, and over the weekend, I did it, and it was, it was great. But anyways, here's a picture, a picture of me. Um, anyone who knows what I'm holding gets a special prize. Not what type of trout? Nice. OK, you get a special prize. Um, what's interesting about this is notice my head or my face is 70 years old. Holy shit. Excuse my language. Wow, that hurt. You know, I'm not, my wife is totally weird about the getting old thing. I am not. I'm, I'm comfortable with it, but 70, wow. I'm 55. So um, notice how my face is probably what? One, one 50th, one 40th the size of that picture, right? I'm wearing glasses, occluded. I've got the old guy things on, you know, the magnifiers, because fly fishermen go like this a lot, right? And it still picked out my face. That's relatively impressive. This is the type of thing in machine learning that, you know, we at Internology go, thank God you guys do this, because it would be so hard to find the face, draw the box around it, and do it in three milliseconds. Right, part th this particular technology lives in Windows. If you have a trendy Surface book like me, you know that does facial recognition. It d it does this inherently. It's in the Windows API. That that's awesome stuff. That's not as awesome as this though. Um, I have. Oh, now we have to go to memory. Let's see. It's got to be. It's probably called Face something. I'm in, just in my pictures folder. Yeah, here we go. OK. So I have uh, uh, a number of pictures loaded in this thing. One of my good friend, Linda, she's the CEO in, in, in one of my companies. And then there's five pictures of me. Now, what did it do right there? Re remember, I'm running this from Visual Studio, and, and this source code is free to you. It's, it's right in GitHub. It loaded these pictures. And then it did the machine learning on them and created classifiers so that they could be recognized. And it did it like that. Right? Once, you, once you machine learn these things, you don't have to do it over and over and over. You do it once. And, and like in one of my companies, when you're looking for bad guys, you know, the more pictures of the bad guys you have, the better. 
But you only train them once to look for the bad guy. So I've got five of me. Typically, if you're looking for a bad guy, you have 50 pictures from when they're young to they're old and everything in between, occluded. And, and, and I'm sure there's bad girls, too. So in defense of females here, yes, you can be equally as awful as some of the terrorists in the world. So um, notice I only have five of me, and they're not really good pictures. So now I'm going to pick that fishing. Oh, thank God it went into the folder. I'll pick that fishing picture again. You think it's going to nail me? Remember, I, or I should have told you, that, that's, that's freaking impressive. I, I don't know if you know what just happened, but I mean, you could barely see my face. Look what it's comparing against, and it nailed me. Even though I'm wearing sunglasses, I've got the little things, that's impressive. The facial recognition is a problem that was solved a couple years ago. It's a commodity thing now, which is amazing. Uh, I'm hitting an Azure server way back in the US. If I wasn't so lazy, I would have pointed it to this part of the world. You know, so it actually can happen in, in a perfect network scenario, which doesn't exist. There's no such thing as a perfect network. But if there was, that's a three millisecond response time to 10,000 people in the database. If you've got a lot of bad guys and need to go beyond 10,000, there's ways to shard the database and, and go bigger. Or, or if you wanted to, if you're the country of North Korea and wanted to identify every single person in the country, then you could build that type of database, right? That's probably a bad, bad example for, t for today's world. Um, sorry about that. Um, but you could, you could, it's not too far a stretch to think of that. OK, so I think I covered enough on that. We don't need to stare at a bunch of code because this is so simplistic. It is just calling a REST API, which means right about here. I'm instantiating that object and making the call. And then basically, I get it back with a bunch of properties. You know, the name. And it said I was 70 years old, but give it credit. It's only got, you know, a tiny portion of my face that it's looking at. Maybe if I wasn't wearing sunglasses, it might say I'm 25. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. It's usually pretty accurate. You're not laughing at my jokes. All right. I need to get better. I'll get better. Here we go. Um, let's move on to the good stuff. So um, the next set of a uh, uh, couple demos I'm going to do are going to use the face API, which we just saw, and an emotion API. Imagine a world where computers look at your face and try to predict the, your emotion. Um, that's another interesting problem that, that uh, Microsoft is working on, and a lot of people are working on. And then a little bit of the Bing um, a search API. First, we'll look at the engine that, that runs um, on the product company side of my life. Actually, let me set up the use case first. Don't read the text. This is a marketing slide, and we're developers. Look at the pictures on the right. Uh, those are, stay with me, uh, coolers, uh, refrigerators and freezers that are in the grocery stores and C-stores like 7-Eleven around the world. And in the door of the cooler is a transparent touchscreen. You with me? It's a screen, a transparent touchscreen that runs this beautiful transparent content. OK? And what we do is kind of big brother, but it's amazing technology. Um, the designers create eye-catching content that gets you to turn. Um, that means there's activity in it. There's movement. There's beautiful people doing happy things. right? Once you turn and look, boom, we got your face. And we do a number of things. You think I'm kidding. <laughs> this is coming here very soon, <laughs> uh, if it's not here already. Um, we do, uh, first, we look for the bad guy. right? Uh, and we look for and, and known criminals around the world, very common database. Then we look for, in the US, we have this concept called amber alerts. They are stolen children. They're called different things in different parts of the world. And in this part of the world, you have this problem. Maybe not in Australia, but they definitely have this problem in Africa. Right? So we're looking for stolen children. Um, and then in some cases, we do loyalty. Some people want to be recognized. Beyonce wants to be recognized when she goes to LAX in the Delta terminal. Swear to God. We recognize Beyonce because she didn't want to talk to anybody. 
She just wants to blow in there, go to her special lounge, get on her, get on her dedicated 747 and do her thing, right? Um, but we're also doing a demographic profile, age, race, gender, and we're doing an emotional profile. Demographic profile is um, one of our customers would be the largest champagne company in the world based in France whose champagne would famous one is Dome and begins with a P and ends with an N, right? They have beautiful white people that are drinking champagne and having fun as in that mode I told you about. But if an Asian walks in front of it, suddenly it turns to beautiful Asian people drinking champagne. That is wildly effective to people who aren't computer elitists like you. You are not consumers. Understand that. This stuff doesn't work on you. You're the computer elite. This works on people like my wife and my 22-year-old and my 25-year-old. Right? We're also doing an emotional profile. We're not going to pretend that we know what these metrics mean, um, from anger to happiness to contempt and everything, everything in between. Uh, folks like Jennifer are experts in this stuff, and they would take our raw scores and give the authorities a propensity to commit suicide, propensity to commit terrorism, propensity to steal, things like that. With our, with our stuff. Okay, I think I've set this up way too long. Let me just demo this thing. Uh, this would be the engine. Uh, this is golden. This would be the engine that runs behind all this software. Now, I'm using um, Microsoft Cognitive Services way back in the US, so there might be a little bit of a delay, um, but this is lightning quick. I'm gonna throttle the API to say, every one second, I'm going to pull a frame out of the video, and I'm going to send it up to the Microsoft Cognitive API. Does that make sense? But I'm not going to do it on my fancy Surface Book camera. A Surface Book is a grossly overpriced computer that has a 3D camera in it. It's an amazing little camera, and it does facial recognition for Windows. You don't have to type your password. So it's an awesome little computer, and that's a fancy camera. I'm going to use a commodity camera here. This is similar, if not identical, to the camera in your iPhone or your Android device. And at least one person in here, Jennifer, has a um, Windows phone. Um, but, but they're all about, did you know this? They're about $4. At, at quantity, the iPhone camera is $4 US dollars. Th these are cheap cameras. What they do in software is amazing, but the camera is pretty cheap. All right, so this has a housing on it. It's got a USB thing. So this is like 20 bucks. So I'm purposely doing a bad sample. OK? Make sense? So that's, that's this HD USB camera. I'm not going to use a Microsoft camera. And then here we go. And I'm in the dark. So you know, God knows what this is going to do. Oh, it's going to, if I move a certain way, we could do double facial recognitions behind me, right? Uh, I'm 55 years old. And you, if you saw it start, it probably started kind of high. It worked its way low. It, it, it does that in real time. Um, it nailed me. It's saying, I'm 69% confident that's Tim. And that's cool. That's interesting. Remember, this isn't styled on purpose. This is not a pretty demo. This is the engine that runs behind a lot of the software using Microsoft Cognitive. What is interesting is that, that um, control on the right. Um, I always look for my disgust and my contempt. And clearly, I'm having a good time in Australia because my contempt and disgust is not high today. But maybe some of you who are thinking, holy shit, this guy's big brother. Maybe you have a lot of contempt in your, in your facial recognition. All right, so th there's that. that that's kind of cool. And, and there's a lot of proprietary stuff that we do on the client side in this. And, and, and this is professional software. But the good news, if I remember correctly when I put this together, the good news, yeah, is that you can do this yourself basically for free. And that's called, that's called Intelligent Kiosk. Yeah. All right. So the source code, Microsoft has made the source code for this little app available to you. And uh, there it is. Here's the same kind of app. Notice the control on the bottom. 
It's using a different facial recognition database. It can, can I have a, a can, can you be a guinea pig and come up here with me? I forgot to tell you that uh, you know, this isn't a one-to-one -one thing. We can see thousands of people at a time. Here, can you put, do you mind being uh, demographically profiled? Are you, is that, is that her? <laughs> First time I did this demo, I did it in Europe, and uh, there was a, a middle-aged woman in the front row, and I pulled her up on, I will never make that a mistake again. <laughs> I mean, she, you, th you think it's funny, but she was furious, furious, because it, it got her like 10, 10 years higher than she really was. It said, she, like she was older than me, she was pissed. All right, so that's cool, thanks, What's buddy. Thing? What's your name? Uh, David. David, I might bring you up again. Thank you. OK, so the source code's available to this thing. You can have this thing, right, and, and, and do this type of stuff in your own apps. All right, let's press on because, OK, I'm a little bit behind. All right, so next thing on the agenda is computer vision. Uh, this is computer vision, or Microsoft's computer vision API is a tool to gather a number of properties from an image, like it, it says like the brown cow is, is uh, or it's going to say next, the brown cow is sitting in a field eating lush grass. Th this is the, the impressive t technology like when Shaqib, he does that gesture on his glasses and, and his glasses take a picture essentially and process it. And it says, that's a young girl throwing a, a yellow frisbee. That's this technology. Uh, this, this was pulled off from a group of computer vision and uh, in natural language processing at Microsoft. Um, there's even, there's even a feature in PowerPoint that uses this that does for accessibility. We have an accessibility expert, L, in the audience that does the alt text processing on pictures so that, that people with disabilities or, or accessibility problems can, can read what's in the picture as opposed to being able to see it. Does that all that type of stuff automatically. Um, Computer vision, all for many professional companies, also uh, handles removing all the adult and racy content um, out there um, and does a good job of that. So um, the version one of this was released over two years ago. Uh, about six months ago, we got a new version two of this. The key feature of this is the capability to categorize or tag images, right? Um, and this is what's important as it goes back to Shaqib, the blind guy. Um, when Shaqib did those glasses, uh, the state of technology was that he could only see, see 86 things. So that's kind of the smoke and mirrors in that video. He could, it, it, he's, his software, his glasses could recognize a yellow frisbee, but if someone was playing baseball, it would go, I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, or, or rugby, sorry. Um, uh, right, 86 is not enough for blind people. Then we went to 2,000 about a year ago, and that's an en enormous jump, 2,000. But if a blind person needs to see, they need to see tens of millions of objects, right? And that's where we're on the cusp on. Um, the demo I'm going to show you is a way to classify objects yourself that will allow Shaqib to see anything in crazy great stuff. So, but first, let me do the uh, custom vision demo and show you how this works. Um, um, what are we, we going to do? Oh, in, yeah, vision API. I shouldn't have killed that. Intelligent kiosk. There we go. So again, you get the source code to this, and I want to do the Vision API, and I might as well use the image that every single person at Microsoft uses. It's this handsome swimmer guy, right? So it's analyzing this image, and it's going to come out, and it's going to say, um, a man swimming in a pool of water. It's also going to do uh, an age. Uh, estimate on him, um, and then it's going to do some tags on you know sport and water and things like that. And that in itself is impressive. This is technology of about a year ago, so keep that in mind. And again, this is you can have this type of source code. All right, going a little bit faster so we can get to the good stuff. 
All right, and we are here. So um, this custom vision sh is object recognition. It should be called awesome vision because it's the best kept secret in Microsoft uh, until a couple weeks from now. Um, and it is a wildly powerful. Remember that seeing faces and analyzing faces is a problem that was solved a while ago. Right? We're really good at doing that. Seeing objects is different. Right? Um, it's very tricky. It takes a ton of machine learning to do that. It typically took, in Shaqib's case, 86 objects took like a year and a half to be trained. Now we have an ability to do this in minutes, if not seconds. So let me set this up. Let me go to the custom vision portal, which, yes, thank goodness I have it open. So um, I have, this, this is the Azure portal in custom vision. Okay, I haven't prettied this up or anything. This is the engine that you can use for free until you put it in production and then you pay for it and it's still fractions of seconds. But you can see I have trained a number of things, a number of Cokes, 40 of them. I have trained 28 Pepsis, Pepsi bottles, and 33 Pepsi cans. If you haven't figured it out yet, in production we are looking for Pepsis and Cokes and we're solving hard problems like inventory and inventory disruption and then proof of purchase at the acquisition point. So when my wife grabs a Coke or a Diet Coke in her case, she, uh, you know, it, it nails that. We, we do that type of stuff. But that's not the cool part. So as you'd imagine, if I, I'm just going to use local files, completely digital, and it's going to say, yeah, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that's a Coke. What's important here is I only had 40 images of Coke. In this world, you typically train hundreds of images, thousands of machine hours to do this. I trained 40 images by pilfering them from the internet in about 15 minutes. That in itself is awesome. You want to see what's more awesome, awesomer? Uh, that would be um, rooster. Rooster. Again, this is an engine. This is not styled or pretty on purpose. I'm going to hammer the API one frame per second. I'm going to use this cheap camera. And I've got a Coke in bad light, right? This is UWP. This little app is UWP. But it could just as easily be Java or a web app or, you know, whatever, right? Cross-platform because these are... These are just REST APIs. So here we go. And, you know, there's, so immediately it's like, yeah, I'm 100% sure that's a Coke. Look at the, look at the, I, if you're a camera person or a photography person, I am not. Look at the, um, the flat, the show, what do you call that? The shine in there. That's actually a bad image that's going across and it's still nailing it, right? This is an Australian Pepsi, um, and I tested this earlier. You know, your, your Pepsi bottle is slightly different, and you can see it's struggling with it a little bit. There we go. But it's nailing it. That is awesome, right? Don't you agree that is incredible? But that's just Pepsis and Cokes. That, this isn't the awesome demo. Um, the awesome demo needs a little setup. And this, let's see, I did this, I did this. Oh, yeah, cool. I have a video. Let me set this up with a video. So, if we can see Cokes and Pepsis, why can't we see weapons from a thousand feet away with common surveillance cameras and prevent some really bad things that happen, especially in the US? Crazy people run in, in my hometown, Carlsbad, California, which is San Diego, a crazy guy ran into the local grammar school and started shooting, right? If we could, in real time, this is all real time stuff, if we could real time see this stuff from common surveillance cameras, how awesome would that be? You would prevent it because 
These people typically take two to five minutes in the parking lot loading their weapons, right? It's an easy problem to solve with this technology. In the medical world, you know, it's overwhelming the genetic deficiencies we have as humans. You know, it, it, the current thinking is that every human has cancer. It's just we kind of die before it manifests. We have genetic problems, right? There's some disorders and diseases that go uncaught. So I, I met this gal at Microsoft. Here, let me just play this video, and it'll do a better um, uh, job of setting it up uh, better than I can. Now, apologies that there, a, a, some of this video is like an internology commercial, so ignore that, my company. Microsoft did this video they're, for us because they were so excited about it, but it, um, the disease is the important part. In 2014, my husband and I discovered that we were having our second child. At 12 weeks pregnant, we found out that he had less than a 2% chance of survival due to a condition called posterior urethral valves. It's often missed, but if you've got qualified people who know what they're doing looking at the images, then you can pick it up early. If I had been in the town I grew up in, which is rural Redding, California, this would never have been discovered and my son would not be here today. I think everybody knows that in healthcare there's a huge need for innovation. When I heard Melissa's story, I got really motivated because I've been working with Microsoft Cognitive Services Custom Vision. Computer vision is essentially computers recognizing objects, but using machine learning to make that easy. I took Melissa's story and an x-ray that has the syndrome, I hold up the x-ray and boom it nails it i hold up a normal x-ray and boom it nails it with lightning speed and this is pennies we have to be really uh, competitive and when we can go in and i can't take the internology commercial but you got the thing there's there's this syndrome called puv it, it's very rare disorder only happens in males in utero melissa um and her husband came this close to terminating their pregnancy because it was caught too late. And it, it's so easy to catch if you're trained to look for it. But not all physicians, not all medical people can be trained to look for everything. This is the place where computer vision helps. Computer vision doesn't make mistakes, right? It's software, it's black and white, right? So. Um, this is one of those things where it's 3 o'clock in the morning and I'm, I'm so excited because I'm building classifiers and, and my proof of concept is working. I want to call somebody, but it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Of course, that's the middle of the day for you people, but, but back at the people that cared back at Microsoft, I couldn't, I couldn't talk to them. So um, let me show you what I did. Uh, imagine a world where, let's see, whoopsie, I don't want to go there. Imagine a world where in the process of ultrasound, of taking an ultrasound, which is a, a magnetic image of the, of the uterus, right? If you just interjected this, it would, it would take like three milliseconds to do this. And, and you'd look for PUV, but you'd look for a, a number of things. So, you know, if I do a quick test, so here's the, the digital version, and I'll pick, there's the normal, this happens in the bladder um, of, the, of the little boy. And, oh, and I told you it's 98% fatal. If they miss it, the baby dies upon birth, right? So there's a normal one, and, and I trained 40 images. I should be training 500. And I only trained uh, 21, because I can only find 21 with this rare syndrome, and if we went and found the syndrome, you know, one of these with PUV in it, it that's that, that bubble type thing. And you can see that, yeah, I'm 99% that is a PUV disorder. If that happened in process, you'd save so many lives, right? Isn't that freaking awesome? But it gets, it gets awesomer. So um, I love this little test container we built. So let me switch it to PUV. And again, the best demos for me are the ones that aren't smoke and mirrors. 
where you take the worst case scenario. So I'm going to use the $4 camera in the UWP app in the classifiers I built for PUV. And I'm going to take a printout of a Insta, uh, what do you call a, a automatic camera, not a fancy camera, that took a picture of a cheap monitor in a hospital room of someone with PUV. It's like the worst case scenario, right? It's not even a, a, an original image. You think it's going to work? I promise you it works. And that's why it's going to be the, the flagship key, keynote demo at Ignite in a couple of weeks. Um, so here, here's a normal image. And you could see right away, it's like, yep, I'm 98 or 99% confident that that's a normal bladder. And then here's PUV. That is freaking awesome. Guess what we do next? We take um, MRIs of the brain, and we take images out of that, and we look for brain diseases, and we look for cancer. And, and really, this is one of those technologies that can help the world. The, the CEO of Microsoft has a um, disabled son. And unfortunately, it could have been caught in utero. This, this, and it could have been fixed, and they missed it. And he has a severely handicapped son because, because of it. His name is Satya Nadella. When I was at Microsoft, he was a little PM. Uh, now he's the CEO of one of the most powerful companies in the world. But I tell you, I promise you, he's a great man. And he has honesty and integrity. And this thing brought him to tears because it could have fixed his son, this type of technology. That is freaking awesome. I hope you agree. OK, do you agree? You're looking at me like I'm crazy. You didn't clap, but you're looking at me like I'm crazy. Yeah. So um, back to reality. Whoa. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> I just crashed PowerPoint. Hang on. <laughs> God. Uh, I have this cool new beta. You know, I have this interpreter, this language interpreter that works with PowerPoint. It was make, made by the Microsoft Cognitive team. So like, I could be talking, and it could be showing you Spanish subtitles at the same time, or, or French, or, or whatever, um, Afrikaans. What, it doesn't matter. It, amazing technology, but it's a little fragile, and it just cr crashed PowerPoint. So um, on CNN, we can't cross software, but in, in front of you guys, we can. Uh, da, da, da. Where were we? I think we were here. We did this. How am I doing? Okay, I've got 12 minutes to wrap this up. Perfect. We are here. Go. No, we don't want subtitles. Okay, there we go. Yes. So, uh, all these cognitive services I've showed you, especially this custom vision thing, they're amazing. Um, but what if I have a petabyte of pictures? What if I'm uh, Shutterfly or Google or Facebook or somebody like that? It doesn't make sense to use a real-time API, right? You know, even though the calls to the API are fractions of a penny, I believe it's a a dollar sixty per a thousand calls to the API. One dollar sixty U.S. for a thousand API API calls. But if you have a petabyte of pictures, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, fractions of pennies add up when computers are, are doing it, right? So um, the Azure Data Lake and uSQL um, people made a, this huge announcement about this su SQL-like support for this type of thing. I don't, I don't it's, it's declarative SQL with the imperative C-sharp, um, and it lets you process data like this at scale if, if you have petabytes of data. Um, you, you get results in a massively paralyzed fashion with the same familiar syntax of SQL that you love. Uh, it's pretty neat. I, I don't really have a lot of time to show you any of that in depth, but I believe, yeah, here we could just stare at a little SQL. Looks like SQL to me. Why not? I now have, thank you, Jen. 
I now have three versions of PowerPoint running the same deck all at the same time. OK, I'm thinking I'm good. How about now? Can you see that? Oh my god, how about, I don't know how that happened. How about that? Whew. Windows just switched from duplicate to extend. Th that looks like SQL to me. Does that look like SQL to you? That looks like the SQL I used to use in 1991, um, which would allow us to say, I don't know, this would be totally break privacy law, but what if Facebook wanted to get the name of everyone who is a Facebook member that um, was white and from California? That's totally against privacy law. But you would use this type of technology to do that type of thing. Uh, OK, we don't need to go into gory details on that. <coughs> Let's move on and wrap this thing up. So. Um, some of the, the problems I've talked about uh, today have been solved with this awesome suite of 29 APIs. I've showed you like, or have talked about half of them. There are also classes of problems that Microsoft has not got to yet. Um, for those problems, there is a tools kit. It's called uh, the Microsoft Cognitive Tool Toolkit. We call this CNTK. Um, it's a library for deep neural networks. This is for you people who want to be experts in machine learning, who want to dive into machine learning. Uh, it's focused on scalability. It's easy to use. It's engineer friendly. Um, for those of you devs that uh, have some expertise in, in machine learning, this is not an academic tool, although it is open source. Uh, this, is, this thing is for production systems. We use, stay with me, we use CNTK you saw the, the box drown, drawn around my face in that first demo. And I told you, hey, you get this for free in Windows. That Microsoft solved that problem. Well, they didn't solve the problem for putting the box around the weapon in, when you're looking into a crowd of 500 people. So we, we use CNTK for that. It's because when you're, if, you're, if we're going to send an alert, we are 37% confident that that's an M16 in that crowd. If we're going to send a security alert like that, you know, it's got to have the yellow box around it, and somebody has to make a decision on it, even though we fire the event in real time, right? There's a, there's a Microsoft uses this for a bunch of use cases internally. It's been open source for over two years. Um, I gave you some use cases, uh, like another creative use case I came, uh, I ran into the other day was this brilliant guy who's using predictive and anal analytics um, to predict the winner of horse races. Or gambling. He's using machine learning for gambling. It's, a, it's a, the perfect job, right? You have no customers and you have no employees. <laughs> right. All right. OK, let's wrap this up. Oh, uh, one of the last things I want to talk about very briefly is um, the content moderator. This is not an API. This, this, you could get the source code to this thing. This is a full blown application that Microsoft provides to a number of companies to do content moderation. What does that mean? Uh, Reddit. You know the crazy people that go on Reddit and just cuss and you know say all these awful, terrible languages. Well, they, they use the content moderator. I'm not supposed to tell you, but the, you know they use this tool to filter out all that awful stuff. All right? There are places on the internet that don't filter, but most companies have to do that type of thing. Um, Last but not least, this video indexer is an amazing tool. I, I could go on and on and on about the great tools in, that Microsoft Cognitive provides. This is one of them. Um, this allows you to upload a video, and it will pull the metadata out of a video and go farther than that. It will do machine intelligence on the video, meaning if this video we're recording today was to run through this tool, it would automatically pick up my name it would automatically pick up that we talked about machine learning and Microsoft Cognitive, um, custom vision. Um, it, would, it would nail down a, a bunch of the use cases that we talked about. It indexes keywords so you could go to the place in the video. Like for instance, um, for the build videos, 
you know, I run them through this because I know at some point they want to talk, they're talking about a technology that I'm interested in. And I could just zoom forward to that. I don't have to go through like the, you know, in the beginning of this presentation, the, the five minutes, the uncomfortable about Tim slides. I could just skip that and go right to custom vision, um, which would be a, a good example. I believe, how are we doing on time? Yeah, I got four minutes. So let me just show you this thing real quickly. Um, hopefully PowerPoint doesn't freak us out again. Yeah, oh, perfect. So I'm logged in under my account. This is uh, my favorite session and build from the Microsoft Cognitive team. And I've already run it through this tool. Now, you know, th this is Anna Roth on the Cognitive team. She's not All famous. Right, guys. Uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for being here today. Uh, you're in the top. She's not famous, so it doesn't know who she is. But if, if this was Satya Nadella or Jennifer or Elle, it would know who they are. Notice I can skip. Oh, man, this is rendering really poorly. Let's do this. There we go. I can skip forward to the part where they talk about machine learning, right? Because it's indexed that and just start from right there. Right, that, that's pretty amazing stuff. You can run this on your own videos in your own company. This is a free tool. And then give folks the tools they need or just use it for your own learning. Right, if you wanted to learn about this stuff, you don't want the uncomfortable about Tim stuff, you just, you know, boom, forward it to machine learning or custom vision or something like that. Amazing tool. Okay, let's wrap this thing up so you guys can get on to your next thing. Um, I have said at least three times that this team does an awesome job of guidance. Um, this is how you get started. It's all for free. If, if you want, you can take a picture of this or you can send me an email. I won't save your email address. I won't put you on a list. I don't even know how to do that. But I just don't have a, a download place for you yet where you can download you know, not only the, the PowerPoint deck I have, but the, the demos that I showed you and where to get those. So um, um, that would be here, uh, top right. If you send me an email and want this deck or anything else, just send me a note. I promise you I won't keep your email address. Um, and with that, I'm done. And I think, is there any, I've got two minutes. Any comments or questions in the two minutes before I send you off to your new thing, your next thing? Comments or questions? No? OK, then we're done. Oh, we're, we're almost done. One question, go. I was wondering how that would work with the Great question. Awesome question. Can I paraphrase? The question was, hey, Tim, all that stuff was awesome and in real time, but what if we don't have an internet connection? Right? There ain't no cloud without an internet connection. Um, most of these technologies have a roadmap that will allow them to run either on the edge or locally. Um, the, the, the one we really need is that object recognition. And it's in the roadmap. It just hasn't been announced yet. You can assume, and remember, I'm not a Microsoft employee, so I can say this. You can assume that Microsoft will produce offline scenarios for every one of these APIs. It's going to be expensive. Let's assume that also. You know, if you use the cloud and Azure, it's going to be cheap and pennies. If you want to run this in your own data center or on your own camera, stuff like that, it's going to be more expensive. Just assume that. But yeah, in the roadmap for all this stuff. Great question. L? Hi. Um, I asked on Twitter if there's any Microsoft Azure solution in the know, but how, what's the level of accuracy that you're looking for in the L's question was, what's the level of accuracy for the video indexer? You might as well ask. What's the level of accuracy for a demographic profile, for facial recognition, for object recognition? So then I can answer, it depends. <laughs> or I don't know. Um, I don't know offhand. I could tell you that in Video Indexer, it's shockingly accurate. Like, whoa, how did it do that? Because all the natural language processing, that, that problem's been solved. And basically, it's looking for what's being spoken. Right? Okay. 
All right, the next speaker's got to get up here, so I got to let, let you go to your next thing. Thanks for coming. It's fun for me.